Good day and welcome to the 1st of March which is also meteorological spring and it sort of does certainly feel spring-like today though there is that breeze as you may be able to hear and of course you can see this little windmill going round every now and again when the breeze comes along. So this is our no longer vinyl tomato bed. It has been forked over and weeded and then forked over and weeded again. All in all, that was about five hours work, which I hope is going to pay off. Though there were so many weed roots and so many weed shoots in here, but I think there'll also be an awful lot of weeds seeds in there as well. And of course, what will have happened is me turning this soil over will have brought some of those weed seeds to the surface and they are likely to germinate in the sunshine. So I'm in two minds at the moment about whether I let that happen and then hoe them off or whether I cover it in cardboard. But whatever I do, I am going to do a soil test on it. And I will then look at scattering chicken manure pellets over it as well. I want this bed to be quite nutritious because this is where our tomatoes are going to go. So what I'm likely to do is put a pathway all the way down the centre, just maybe 20, 25 centimetres. And then I'll have two long beds this year to be able to plant our tomatoes. The beds will be, what will they be? They'll be about one metre wide each. And I think what I might do is do tomatoes near the edge. So near this edge and near this edge, if you see what I mean, and then space one in between each double pairing. But I'll think about that. But you know what? I'm so, so pleased to have got this done. I'm absolutely chuffed. Of course, I need to start thinking now about these beds down here, but I'll do that later in the week. I'm just going to enjoy this at the moment. And I've now got over the fact that we had to shorten this a bit as well by, by maybe 25 centimetres. I wanted it to be longer, but with this big oil drum or whatever is in here, that, that was not going to happen. So yeah, I'm just so, so pleased with this. So basically what I did is after I had forked it over, I then used the back of the rake, as you saw me do, with the soft fruit bed to just roughly level out the soil. Because you'll find often, or I find anyway, that when I'm forking over, I'll end up with maybe a pile here and a pile over here and a pile over here. So what I did is I just leveled those piles out. It's not perfect, but you know what? It's such an improvement. I mean, it was... Um, <laughs> It sat here as the vinyl tomato bed since we took out the tomatoes, which I think was about mid-October. So it sat here for almost four months. But you know what? The time was right for me to get it done and the time was right for the bed to get it done. And done it is. Let's just have a quick look at the soil. So the soil is is pretty good, you know. But look, another bit of plastic. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's there's another bit of glass. There's quite a lot of moisture retention in there. There's a little bit of clay I found when I was digging yesterday but when I do this you can see that it's a drier bit 
it is just crumbling so I don't have too much clay in there so yeah it'll be interesting to see how nutritious this soil is another bit of sank foil root however much you get out you sort of never get everything out here we have our Oregon sugar pod look at these train driver mountain range peas mange too and then sweet peas right at the end but look why they need to go in their roots are coming out so I'm going to need to find a bed for them this week and then keep them covered with some fleece at night because we're still getting quite cold at night but I'm just so impressed by how quickly well how strong they are but also how quickly these have come on yeah fabulous So we'll leave it there for this first day of a week at the plot. It's really sunny, as you can see this shard of sunlight coming in a gap in the, the shed. It's really sunny out there. There is quite a bit of work going on at the corner house, but also there's somebody up the road just here having their, um, or having some scaff put up. So that's making quite a bit of noise. So I was hoping to do something, but with the incessant banging on camera, I won't do that today. And also we seem to have rather a lot of planes going out of Heathrow today as well. And they're coming over this way. And there's another one on its way, I can hear. I'm not sure if you can. So I will leave it there today. I'm so pleased with having got that tomato vinyl bed sorted. And now of course, I think I need to find another name instead of tomato vinyl bed or will I I don't know see you very soon bye good day these are our aubergine that we sowed on the 18th of January and then brought to our upstairs room at home as you can see two have germinated this one germinated on the 18th of February and this one I think it was about five days later but as you can see there's no other germination in here the seed that we're using is packed January 2013 so by December 2014 so it's really quite out of date seed but I wanted to see if any would germinate and I would also like to grow some aubergine this year. So what I'm going to do is I know some of the seeds are viable because clearly they've come up. And I'm not sure if you can see just here, there's a true leaf coming through. The cotyledons, which are these two, are there and there's a true leaf coming through. So I'm just going to make holes in the compost and so the other seeds that I have I've got nothing to lose if more come up that's great if they don't at least I've got two aubergine seedlings coming through so the hole is maybe about an inch deep and now I'm just going to drop one seed into each hole that one didn't go in the hole right just with my finger just going to push these down I think I said an inch it's actually just about a centimeter not an inch right 
Right, so hopefully those two in three weeks, four weeks, five weeks time will be joined by some little friends, though maybe these will have been potted on before then. OK, we'll leave it there for today. I'll see you again down at the plot tomorrow. Bye. Good day. What a day it's been so far. Oh, it's A, it's sort of pretty noisy down here. But B, the planes have really been kicking out from Heathrow today. And I decided to do my marked seed sowing video. So the video of what we're sowing and growing this month from the shed this morning. Because, you know, I've done so many other videos. I wanted to get this one in the bag and, and up for March. And honestly, it, the planes were making so much noise. There's another one coming over now. Uh, I, I was stopping and starting. I have loads of bits of video of 10 seconds or 1 minute 30 or something and then there was a lull and I got I thought fantastic you know and I, I got my video done and my video is there but it won't open I don't know I don't know I can see it says 29 minutes maybe it's just saying 29 minutes is too long for a what we're sowing and growing this month video <laughs> maybe that's what it's saying so it'll either sort itself out or, or else I'm going to have to do it again. I, I think in my heart of hearts I'm going to have to do it again because when something goes wrong like that, it sort of very often doesn't resolve itself. Anyway, one good thing that I suddenly got really excited about yesterday, I'm going to show you today. And I know you've seen this shot so many times before. But I'm going to show you because I've, I've, I've suddenly got quite excited about this area. It suddenly dawned on me yesterday when I was standing in the doorway of the shed that even though I've been telling you that I'm going to put this container of mint into the ground, I'm going to sink it into the ground, it hadn't actually clocked with me that I was going to do that. So I've been saying to you, well, I want to, uh, this bed is going to be a little bit shorter than these because I want to make sure that I can get a wheelbarrow through this area here comfortably. Well, of course, if this is in the ground, then it's not going to obstruct a wheelbarrow. So what I have decided is that I'm going to extend this bed here exactly the same width as that bed and that bed and that bed down there so there will be a sort of straight line that takes us down here which i'm really really chuffed about it just hadn't dawned on me you know because i was worried about the edge of the wheelbarrow hitting the top of this lip of this container but of course that's not going to happen because it's going to be in the ground isn't it isn't it bizarre? So it's sort of taken me all of doing this and thinking about this area and all of this, moving this over and moving this in a little bit. And maybe it was moving this in just a tad made me think maybe I can move that out just a tad. And now I realize I can because this is going to be in the ground. But isn't it funny how you, you say things to people? Like I've been saying to you for for ages you know this is going to be sunk in the ground it's a container of mint which is invasive as a plant i don't want it to take it over don't want the mint to take over the whole bed so it's staying in this container i'm thinking about whether i thin it out or not uh, that is a thought i've got at the moment but it's going to be sunk i've been telling you that for months though it only locked in my brain yesterday that it was going in the ground but you know what? That cheered me up so much last night. I was thinking as I was going to bed, I'm really looking forward to telling you that today. But um, yeah, so we'll be doing that. So I think the next thing, now that we've sorted this bed out largely, the next thing is going to be extending these beds. And then we'll get onto the vinyl bed over here in a couple of weeks time. But I'll leave it there today with a realisation by myself of a sunken mint container. See you soon. Bye.
Good day, and a fruitful day today. So I've moved the strawberries from down here and the strawberry bench so that I can look at extending that fourth bed out down there, put the strawberries next to where the gooseberries and blackcurrant are at the moment, or are, full stop, and then move these blueberries over to here so that I can live with this for a few weeks and see how I feel about them being in this permanent position. As you know, if you've been watching us, these will remain in these planters. A, because blueberries like ericaceous compost and B, because of the oil drum that's buried beneath this one. So yeah, I'm just going to live with this for a few weeks mark out this bed at some point over the coming days and then wonder whether the blueberries the space where the blueberries used to be could potentially be used for raspberries therefore sort of extending the soft fruit bed or the gooseberries and the black currants at least so yeah i'm going to leave it there my battery is also running out so I will see you another day for another segment of A Week at the Plot. Bye. Good day. An early morning visit to the polytunnel to open it up. It's not going to get much above six degrees, but the sun has been out, but I want the poly open. Lots to tidy up in this area. Now found a home for these gooseberries and also the other gooseberry bush that we've got. What I did notice this morning, I'm not sure if you can see, but we had, there's ice there. So it froze overnight. Not much ice, but I sort of didn't expect a, I expected a frost, but not ice, but we've got ice. But that's fine. Oh, I've just noticed that damage on the tree. Can you see that? Hmm. I'm going to have to have a look at that. It may be that I need to cut this whole branch off. Gosh. You see, this is the thing. You, you, you come down and you see things. And if you don't look regularly, you just don't see things like that. I hadn't even noticed that in the little bit of pruning that I did, but hey ho. Oh yeah, I can see there's more ice. Lots of tidying to do, but that's okay. Can you see the ice here? Look at that. It's not that thick, I don't think. No, look breaks up quite easily but everything seems to be surviving there's no ice in our ponds which is interesting lots of pond weed in there which I'll move on and in there Let's just have a quick look at how the Mange 2 Sweet Peas and Train Driver Mountain Range are doing. They're just here. Yeah, look, they're doing fine. Look at that. So these are the Oregon Sugar Pod. Then we have the taller ones here are the Train Driver Mountain Range. And then right at the end the sweet peas yeah so obviously it was cold last night and these are absolutely fine just amazed by these right we have a visitor later on so i will leave it there for today 
see you soon bye good day we have a visitor over here look it's awfully chilly it is it is we just it's popped fresh. down we were going to edge the flower bed and i was going to just measure out these beds but Ooh. we've had a walk haven't we yeah. around the site just having a look at just everyone's different parts and and enjoying how this idea that we're all doing the same thing but all doing it so differently that's lovely but also this time of year you can see it's all starting to happen beds are being turned over tarps are being pulled back you can see everyone's at various stages but everyone's getting ready and getting raring it I is it. and we, we've and had great chats with people as well this afternoon lovely plot neighbors really lovely um and obviously the big thing for me today is i haven't been here since the first of january yeah and so to just walk around and see like masses of changes i'm going to point some of them out because i don't think you'll ow you <laughs> get up baby so start off this is great the old what was the tomato vinyl bed and it's now called the tomato bed <laughs> um, the, the the extra deep raised bed that's new yeah that's great and then the fruit bed that's new and all the other beds up in the other end of the garden they're all prepped and ready to go they're all they've either got spent compost has been added or whatever has been they're all they're all raring to go Polytunnel's looking great. I've been checking out all the masses of seeds that have been sown. What's up, what's not, what's coming. Ah, oh, didn't I just do you a favour with your seed sowing, Paul? You did. What was it? <laughs> there was a tray I said, I said to Paul, everything's <gasps> labelled. Oh, everything's yeah. Labeled and I looked at one tray and I said, oh, what's this one? It's got no label. And Paul went, oh, I don't know. I'd She's forgotten. Like, You're going to have to look back at your own videos. And then I said, oh, isn't it a flower beginning with P? I went, polyanthus. So it's now got a label, but yeah, just, just sort of taking it all in and, and, and enjoying seeing all the changes and all the work that's happened. And I literally just, I'll talk to you about this off camera, but I just spotted something <gasps> that might mean another, a slight change of plan back to a former plan with regards to the pocket beds oh. and the tomato bed. Right. And it's all because of the ba oil barrel. <laughs> Oh barrel, yeah, yeah, and the blueberries and making the path there. Should I say what I think now? Yeah. So, you know, we were just down earlier saying that you're going to have to move these apart a little bit. Yeah. In order to have your path. Yeah. Which means we're going to have this one, for example. Oh, heavy. A bit further over. On the end. Yeah. And you were saying, oh, because this is going to be in ground, I can have it further out. Yeah. Even if it's in ground, just have a practice with the barrow because yeah. is that now going to impinge on the barrow? And are you going to knock the are you going to blueberries and lose some fruit? Yeah, possibly. So, so actually, I need to I need to grab the wheelbarrow. I think I'll do that tomorrow and have a yeah. a bit of a go. So yeah, so I'll I'll measure out this bed down here. And do all of that. Move this one back. What the pocket bed? Yeah. Uh, move the the trough back. Move the bed out. Um, and then see how this space feels with the wheelbarrow. In other words, do, bring, bringing the rope out. I know it's pinned down, yeah. but having it out in line with the yeah. others. Yeah. Then trying it with the wheelbarrow. Yeah. I'd be a bit worried about losing fruit. Yeah. Something to think on. Yeah, in fact, the interesting thing is I can switch that one around because the other end, interestingly, this end oh, is growing yeah. out beyond, yeah. but this side isn't. However, it will grow the reason I put it that way is because this side isn't really growing out here, but this side is going yeah. beyond. So, yeah. but you know what? There's a video that a certain Vivi is putting out next week <laughs> about p pruning blueberries. So I'll be watching that. And I didn't even have to pay for this promotion, did I? <laughs> and we ourselves are going to be doing a bit of blueberry 
cutting explanation in the coming weeks. As in cuttings for propagation. Yeah, cuttings for propagation. Which would be great because that's definitely something I want to look at as well because I've got one one stem that's really too long and I don't yeah. like the shape so I'd like to cut it out but I don't want to waste it and lose it so I'm going to wait to watch your video. <laughs> you pat my back i'll pat yours absolutely but no it's looking great it's the, the one thing i'm saying having a look today is it's just it's ready it's ready to go yeah it's ready to plant it's ready to seed it's 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 we're right on that cast but we're chilly we're really chilly at the moment and i think last night was a frost night yeah but within the next few weeks as we get towards the end of march Days are getting warmer. The clocks change at the end of March. Yay! It, it, we're right. We're right. We're about to tip into that gorgeous chaos that is the chunk of the growing season. And this is ready. Yeah. Yeah. So well looking done. forward well to done. that. And a few warmer days. Yeah, I hope so. We won't no. Again. Well, we'll leave it there because it is chilly. We're going to get back home and have a cup of tea and a piece of cake piece of cake hopefully richard's made that lemon drizzle cake shall i phone him now and just make sure he's got it out the oven i think good idea yeah okay bye all bye everyone bye Good day. As you can see, I'm pruning this buddleia. You can actually take a buddleia right down to the ground, but I'm not going to do that this year. What I am doing is taking it down to really decent growth. Where there's two strong shoots coming out normally. Now buddleia grows so, so quickly that it's, it is actually an invasive species, but it's wonderful for butterflies and pollinators. And we certainly want to have it at our plot and on our site, but it does need to be kept tamed. As I say, you could cut it right down to the ground. We're just getting to the end of the, the pruning period for it in the UK at the moment, maybe another week or so. But it's such a robust grower, it will take quite a bit of late pruning. Let me just show you what I'm doing. So this branch here goes up about another three feet. Let me see if I can just loosen this and show you. So it goes up quite a way. And what I'm doing is I'm going to take it down to here, you can see two really strong shoots coming out here. And I'm gonna take it, move that one aside carefully and just take that out. Again, really strong shoots here. I'm just gonna take that out. Again, I'm maybe doing this one a little bit higher and you can just go through your whole buddleia doing this. So that's taken that down to sort of waist height, but I can see in here there's also some dead wood. Let me just bring you over. So here we've got a, a green shoot, but all of this up here and here and here is dead. We do have some growth on this one, but I'm not going to worry. I'm just going to take 
the dead wood out and just leave this one grow. Yeah, I can see here there's some more dead wood, here there's some dead wood, here there's some more dead wood. So I'm going to cut that out as well. Go as far down as you can. Right. I'm just going to take these bits on the right out so they're not growing over our growing space. You can see we've taken that one down quite significantly. All of this is going to be going onto our dead hedge at the back of the polytunnel. A dead hedge is where you can just put a whole load of cuttings, branches, things that aren't going to compost. You can put those at the back of somewhere out of the way and they will just slowly break down and decompose over many years. It's a hedge of dead material that will compost down over many, many years. It'll just break down and is a great haven for wildlife. You may remember last year we saw some hedgehogs in our dead hedge. And of course, that's a perfect environment for them to be safe from foxes and other larger predators. Now, if I can move you around tip you up I'm going to crack on with this buddlier and take some of that height down mainly the bit that's going over the poly tunnel but I do want to keep some height there because it adds as a fantastic windbreak for the poly tunnel So I want to bring this whole canopy down to sort of around here. But I, if I cut that at the top up here, that whole weight is going to come down. So I'm going to take these branches off up here bit by bit, which will reduce the weight when I'm sawing this bit here. Also, Goggles. Make sure you're wearing protective goggles when you're doing something like this. You've got these bits here which really, you know, are dead. You don't want to get those in your eyes, so make sure you're wearing protective goggles. So that's the one that we've trimmed at the side and then you can see we've taken if I just go this way a bit you can see taken quite a bit down the right hand side of the poly and really opened up the light above the poly which is great unfortunately what I did do was I was taking so much care not to drop those branches onto the poly so that it punctured it, I knocked the camera over. So we'll have a little bit of that footage at the end. But yeah, Buddleia, a really vigorous plant, will 
take some of that back later in the year if we don't get round to it this year but at least I've opened up the side of the poly for a bit more light. Right, we'll leave it there. If you've got any comments, please leave them below and obviously any questions. I think next week we're going to be tidying up that area over there. See you soon. Bye.